Hey guys, and welcome back to the Leia Heil Fan Show. This particular episode is sponsored by Exodus Wallet. So a huge thank you to Exodus Wallet because without them, we wouldn't be able to bring you such brilliant content. So Exodus Wallet is a next generation digital marketplace and cryptocurrency wallet. It's available on desktop, it's available on mobile, it's also available on iPhone, Android, it's easy to use, easy to download, and to be honest, is my number one top pick when it comes to cryptocurrency wallets. Joining me today is the one and only mayor of Miami, Frances Suarez. Frances, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you so much. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for joining me. Miami is a really interesting place. I've been here for about two months now, and the first thing that I noticed as soon as I arrived was the intense entrepreneurial spirit. Everybody is building, there's so much innovation, and it's quite unprecedented given the times we're living in. So firstly, I just want to start by saying thank you, essentially, for allowing um, this, this environment to flourish. Well, I appreciate it, and you're right. You know, we, do, we are extremely entrepreneurial. What's changed is that, you know, we used to be sort of a small business mecca, and that's great, and that's wonderful because small business powers this country and powers the world. But I think now we've learned the power of scale. And I think that makes us dangerous, right? In the sense that we have the ability now to tap into what other big markets across the world have tapped into, which is the ability to, to start something and make it something that's ubiquitous, that's, that's used and that solves problems, you know, for the entirety of humanity. And that's really exciting. And I think, you know, when you see that happening in your city, when you see your city transforming, when you realize your city's on the forefront, like you said, of innovation, the forefront of the future, you know that you're creating an ecosystem and an economy that not only serves my generation, but serves my children and my unborn grandchildren. It's such a pleasure to be here and be part of the energy and to feel it all. But speaking of being on the forefront of innovation, yeah. this really started kind of about a year ago. It did. Because you made that infamous tweet. Somebody asked, um, you know, can we make Miami like Silicon Valley? And you said, how can I help? So talk me through this. Why did you want to help? And what is it really that you see for Miami that you wanted to change? Well, we had really been trying for 10 years to create this technological ecosystem. The reason why is because we know that the, the economy of the future is going to be driven by technology. Whether we like technology, or we don't, no matter what party you're from, no matter what issues you may think that, te that exist in technology, it's, it's, it's a reality. And it's a reality that we could either, as a city, we can run from or we can embrace. And so we've decided to embrace it because we know that's a pathway to prosperity for our citizens. We know that's going to create high paying jobs in our community and it's already doing it. So what happened was we had been building this economy sort of slowly, like a small business, you know, bootstrapped with friends and family money. And then all of a sudden on December 4th, we had this sort of IPO moment where we, we shot up like a rocket to the moon and the KPI since then are off the charts. We're number one in the nation in tech job growth, number one in the nation in tech job migration. According to PitchBook, uh, we went up uh, like billions of dollars in VC money from one year to the next. I think it was a 50% growth in one year. Uh, we've we've brought like a trillion dollars of assets under management companies to the city of Miami and, and created thousands of high paying jobs. So we've done that all in one year, which just goes to show how disruptive this world is and how, you know, a city that maybe wasn't talked about in tech is now the city that's most talked about in tech. Absolutely. You guys are leading now when it comes to cryptocurrency. So let's go into all of that. I think sure. what's unique about you as a mayor is that I feel you really understand and really grasp the frustration that people in the cryptocurrency community have with the traditional financial system. So from your perspective, what would you say some of the key issues is that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are actually solving? Well, you, you, I think you articulate very well, which is the fact that in a modern day world, if you have money in a bank account, you're not earning any interest and we're an incredibly inflationary uh, economy, not just in the US, but across the world. And so you're literally losing purchasing power every single day that your money is sitting idle. And so that means that you have to look at options and what are the options that you have? And I think one of the things that people don't talk enough about is with Bitcoin, the market has already taken a look at Bitcoin, looked at its fundamentals and priced it against the dollar. Whether it's 60,000 or whether it's 50,000, it still takes 50,000 US dollars to buy one Bitcoin. So the market has, it, it created a tremendous amount of, of confidence in that system, which is a system that cannot be manipulated by human beings. And it's a system that's open and transparent. That is incredibly powerful. And so, you know, I know that people that don't like Bitcoin, what I call the haters, right? They will point to the volatility of Bitcoin. And my view of it is, you know, I'm not a day trader. I'm not here trying to trying to trade up and down based on a, a price one day or another. I'm holding a, a currency or an asset or a digital asset because of its fundamentals and because of where I think it's gonna go. And I think when you look at its performance uh, over time, 
it certainly outperformed inflation. It certainly outperformed uh, so many other uh, assets. I'm sure that I don't think there's many asset classes that have outperformed Bitcoin. And so it's 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 really just a phenomenon. Like uh, you see these technological phenomena when we went from trading marbles to gold, from gold to you know dollars backed by gold to dollars not backed by gold and fiat currencies. It's just another evolution in the way that we as human beings are going to transact business. And you mentioned inflation there, and we were told um, by the by the Federal Reserve that inflation is transitory. That's kind of the the idea and the sentiment, but it's clearly not the case. And so there seems to be a lot of hostility um, from the Senate, from the government, from all, all sorts of institutions um, towards cryptocurrencies. So how do you see the the two, the traditional system and cryptocurrencies working alongside each other? Do you think that's possible? You know, to answer the first question, I think the federal government, I think, has already started to walk back the idea that it's transitory. You know, you have, um, you know, a ton of money, which has been uh, put into the circulation or in the money supply through excess government spending. And then you have supply chain shortages, uh, which are conspiring to create this sort of perfect storm. And I think a lot of people believe that the CPI is underreporting inflation. I think it's CPI is only at 6%. Uh, people, when you consider housing costs and other things that may not be in the basket of goods of the CPI, think it's significantly higher. So I think that's, that's, that's a big part of it. And what was the second question? I forgot. Oh, okay. So the second part of the question is, how do you see the two systems working alongside each other, given the hostility that we have seen? You, you know, I think right now they're working alongside of each other, but I think that there's a real possibility, a real possibility that one can completely disrupt the other one. Uh, and, and, I, and I think obviously crypto disrupting sort of the fiat uh, legacy system, right? That you would, you would I think where you might see that disruption uh, happen faster is in areas of hyperinflation. Like we're seeing a lot of inflation in the U.S., but frankly, the U.S. dollar is still, you know, considered to be, uh, you know, an important currency. But when you look at Central America, South America, and even Africa, you're looking at uh, areas that are ripe for disruption where people could have more confidence potentially trading Satoshis as opposed to whatever the currency of their of their country is. Uh, and they can do it in a peer-to-peer -peer format. And, and if they can get out of the uh, control structure of what government tries to do, um, then I think uh, we can see uh, not only Bitcoin being something that metamorphoses from store of value into a currency, but we can see it as a liberating force. And that's something that gets me really excited when I think about the landscape of what the future of our world can look like. But given how disruptive you imagine it's going to be, how did your colleagues take to your new innovative stance? And how did you basically convince them? You know, the, my colleagues have been very supportive. Uh, a lot of them, by the way, in sort of my parents' generation, and you know, some of them said like, hey, we, we trust you, you know, like, we, we trust you to do this. So I think that's been part of it. I think the other part of it is the results have been good, right? Yes. Like when you, know, when you see uh, someone innovating and things work out, you, you create confidence, right? You create credibility. And I think they've seen that in me, they've seen you know, the virality of what this moment has created for Miami. We've become a, you know, I think we're the crypto capital of the world. So we brought, thank you, we brought uh, FTX here that did a $200 million naming deal, blockchain.com located its headquarters here, eToro, Israeli uh, exchange located its headquarters here, XPTO. And we brought the Bitcoin conference from LA, 50,000 attendees, we're gonna do it again next April. So we have, I think, changed the center of gravity, uh, uh, you know, from some of the mega markets to what I, can, what I call us the epicenter of capital, or the capital of capital, where we're right in the middle of Europe, the Middle East, you know, uh, New York, South America, and the Silicon Valley. No one of those mega markets is closer to each other than they are to Miami. And so I think that uh, puts us in a unique position to sort of metamorphosize and graduate from being the, you know, the uh, capital of Latin America to being the epicenter of capital. This is, I'm just in awe of what you're doing. It's so refreshing to hear a mayor speak like this. And obviously you're taking your salary in Bitcoin. Sure. That is absolutely wild. So why? Firstly, yeah. um, how, from a practical yeah. standpoint, and obviously, are you not concerned about the volatility? I'm not, and so uh, the, the why and the how, the why is because, you know, we have to keep innovating. We have to always stay ahead of the curve. We have to sort of set the narrative. The how is simple. We use an app called Strike, uh, which is really easy to use and, and it's, anyone can use it. The, do, am I afraid of volatility? The answer is no. And the reason why is because, and, and I have to say in full disclosure, that my mayoral salary is not my only salary. So as a mayor uh, in Miami-Dade County, most of the mayors have outside income. I have a, a, you know, a sort of private sector life. And so it's not my full income. And so you know, I, I don't necessarily think that someone should necessarily put their full income in it, but I do think you know, something that is reasonable in terms of what they want to invest, they want 
want to diversify their portfolio, they want to save money in a particular asset, a digital asset like Bitcoin, you know, that's something that I feel comfortable with. And so I, you also have to lead by example in life, you know? Uh, and I think uh, that creates a level of excitement. You know, when I was the first person, uh, first elected official in America to get COVID, you know, and I did a diary, uh, it made people feel at ease because they saw me dealing with it and struggling with it in a very public way. And so I think that uh, that taught me that, you know, transparency and, and putting yourself out there is something that can be very rewarding. I think it's really rewarding and I think people yeah. actually pick that up um, sure. from you. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it instills more confidence in Miami and everything that you say. But of That's course, the that is the goal. It's, it's a great, it's, it's working. So there's also Miami coin. Ah. So that is also crazy. Talk to me about Miami coin and how it works and also where the value of it comes from. Sure. So Miami coin is a Bitcoin based technology, right? And the reason why is because it's created out of the Stacks blockchain, which hashes onto the Bitcoin blockchain. Obviously, we all know that the Bitcoin blockchain is the most decentralized and secure blockchain on the planet. And so there's an interaction between Bitcoin, Stacks, and then this coin that was created through Stacks, which is essentially a smart contract, uh, which is Miami coin. And Miami coin, what it does which is similar and different with Bitcoin. In Bitcoin, when you mine a Bitcoin, the miner gets 100% of the revenue, as well they should. They're the ones that they're, they're the authenticating mechanism for this network. In Miami Coin, 30% of the mining revenue goes into a digital wallet for Miami. And so for the city, whatever the city it is, whether it's Miami, New York, or whatever, and they've already established New York Coin. So uh, we thought, you know, if it generates $3 million or $5 million in a year, that'd be super successful. It's generated over $20 million in four months. So the, the, you know, the, the, the fact that we have created a brand has gotten people to invest and to, and to, and, and to believe in something like Miami coin and where its value is going to be. And I think similar to, you know, Bitcoin, I do think there will be massive utility uh, models uh, into 2022. I think if 2020 thing, I, I think is the year of the mainstreaming, I think 2022 will be the year of utility. Can you give us some examples of utility for Miami coin? Sure. Uh, one of the things that I would say is, you know, and I think this is the same for Bitcoin. We want to get to a point where you can go in and buy a Snickers with Bitcoin, right? Like, who, you know, when is that moment going to happen? Yeah. And so I think, you know, for Miami coin, not too dissimilar from Bitcoin, if it's liquid, which it is, you know, you can go into a restaurant, you can, you can get a meal in a Miami restaurant, and maybe you get a discount for using a Miami coin. And so I've had a lot of people come to me with, you, you know, utility ideas and how they can collaborate with Miami coin. Um, and so we're going to be unve unveiling some of those next year, hopefully. And so you mine it, an individual just becomes a miner and they, they get 70% of the of the profits? Right. So in, in Bitcoin, in the Bitcoin mining world, you get 100% of the profits. Yeah. You mine something, right? And, and the offshoot of that mining, if you solve the mathematical problem to authenticate the, the, the transaction, you get 100%. In the case of Miami coin, you get 70% and the 30% of what is essentially the pot goes uh, to the cities in, in, a, in a digital wallet. So I read at one point you guys were offering, or not you, but Miami Coin, the network, was offering 430% APY. I think it's now around just over 100% yeah. APY. How does that work? Talk to me about how that's even possible. So the way it works is it depends on how people are investing in, in the coin. So it, it's a totally different uh, a proof mechanism than, than Bitcoin. The proof mechanism of Bitcoin, of course, is proof of work. So it And it's based on splitting from Satoshi's formula. In the case of Miami Coin, you're actually pledging coins. And so the derivative of that pledge is is the mining revenue. And so that's why it can be a higher yield. And, and, but the yield has gone down, which is, is, is understandable and expected. Uh, it's not gonna always be 400%. Everyone would, would, would do that if that were the case. And so that, that's coming back down to earth. Uh, but I still think it's an attractive proposition. And we're gonna stake uh, our Miami coin uh, revenue, which is in, is in stacks, to hopefully create a Bitcoin yield so we can actually give a Bitcoin yield to all of our residents in the city, at least all the ones that, that sign up. Yeah, so two things. Firstly, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's gone from 400 to 100. It's yeah. better than negative interest rates, which 100%. we see across Europe. Amen. Yeah, exactly. So talk to me about that Bitcoin dividend. How does yeah. that work? How often is it paid out? And also, can anybody get involved? So, for example, I'm obviously not a U.S. citizen, sure. but I'm trying to be a resident in 2022. Yeah. When can I get my Bitcoin dividend? Yeah. You gotta be in Miami. I will so, be. That's so the goal. Th there you go. So I, the way it's gonna be is, you know, first we had to we had to create what I call the universe, right? Yeah. So who is a Miami? And how do you define Miami? And anybody can define themselves as Miami. You can be in Nebraska and say, I'm a, I'm a Miami. So we had to come up with the universe. And I think the universe that we're we're thinking of is people who are registered voters in Miami, in the city of Miami. Nice. So that's someone who who we can we can verify, we can define, and we know that they're engaged in some sort of civic endeavor, which hopefully is voting, right? And it also promotes a civic endeavor, which is voting. 
And so that's that's part of it. The second part is is then we would we would offer them hopefully an array of digital wallets, and we're working with some big exchanges. I can't say yet because it would ruin the surprise, right? That would that would put uh, Miami Coin on their uh, digital, um, you know, on their uh, on their exchanges, and would also offer a digital wallet for our residents to be able to receive the dividend in uh, Bitcoin. And so then the third thing is how often will we do it? I think we would like to set it up in a quarterly fashion because I think that, you know, we're not going to be constantly doing it. We want to do it sort of, you know, make it the management cost reasonable and the sort of uh, logistics of it reasonable. So I think that's what we're looking at. And we're, you know, we're, we're doing this for the first time. So we're sort of inventing the wheel, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. And you've actually been called by a lot of tech entrepreneurs, um, the CEO of Miami, which I think is brilliant, um, given that you're trying to recruit as much talent to the city as possible. And we've seen, um, I think he's the now the mayor elect, Eric Adams of um, New York. Yep. So is there competition going on there to, I don't know, see who could become the leading <laughs> cryptocurrency city? Well, I am technically the CEO of the city uh, in the charter. I'm the chief executive officer. But, you know, the, the mayor and I have a friendship, you know, and we've yeah. developed a friendship. And, and you know, for us, it's about we are we're the ones that are like, like you said, we're not only the chief executive officer, we're also the chief marketers of our city. You know, mm -hmm. we, we want to present the best image for our city. We want to give our residents the best chance to be successful into the future. And so when you talk about, you know, New York, uh, obviously their mayor is going to be championing initiatives that he thinks are going to put their city forward. And I think the fact that we've been able to have this sort of fun back and forth is a really positive thing for both of our cities. But more importantly, it's a positive thing for America because it means that the, the, our country is maintaining itself on the forefront of innovation, which is not what China's doing that's shutting down Bitcoin mining and shutting down Bitcoin. We're taking advantage of the innovation that other countries are maybe not taking advantage of. And so in terms of Miami then, where do you see it in the next five to 10 years? You know, like I said, I've been playing with this concept of our metamorphosis, right? I think we're in a generational inflection point in the history of not just our country, but the world. And I think Miami is well positioned to come out of that disruptive era and that generational opportunity as one of the most significant cities in the world. And I think part of it is our geolocation, part of it is our attitude and our perspective on innovation. Um, and, you know, and part of it is our, you know, to your, like you said, our entrepreneurial work ethic spirit that's going to be combined with people coming from the outside and capital coming from the outside. That's going to create this incredible mix that will have a two to five to seven year horizon as, as, as we invest in ourselves and see that the companies that are produced now today uh, are exiting in two and five and seven years. Mayor Suarez, I want to thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you. Um, keep doing what you're doing. I'm loving it. I can't wait to move here. Um, and I really appreciate everything that you're creating. We can't wait for you to be a Bitcoin dividend re recipient. Thank you so much. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Exodus for sponsoring this. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit like so you never miss a video.